I stand before you today, nearly a year since the vicious attack that nearly cost me my life and ended the life of our innocent and soon-to-be-born daughter, Aurora. I need to first thank the amazing people that have come into my life and supported me unequivocally. From the tireless jury to Stan Garnett and his team at the DA's office, to Beth, who took my 911 call, and Billy, Phil, Christy, and the rest of the Longmont Police Department, as well as every other tireless public servant who has spent countless hours working for justice. You have my gratitude. I won't equivocate. There is nothing ever in any shape or form that can remotely prepare you for something like this. What has dominated my perspective consistently is disbelief, and words are not sufficient to describe it, though I may try. It had just never entered my worldview that someone could be so cruel and value life so little. Many have asked me how I feel about Dianelle Lane. Early on I have said I have forgiven her. It's part of who I am as a human being, and Martin Luther King said it brilliantly. We must develop and maintain the capacity to forgive. He who is devoid of the power to forgive is devoid of the power to love. There is some good in the worst of us, and some evil in the best of us. When we discover this, we are less prone to hate our enemies. So no, I do not hate Dinell, but I am angry for all of the pain she has caused, the deceit, and for her selfishness, and this element is hardly fathomable for me. She has answered to the state of Colorado for the heinous crime she has committed. I do hope that she finds the time to reflect on what she did and why, and then find the opportunity to first seek inner peace, and then find a way to pay the spiritual debt that she has accumulated. I am only trying to find peace and stability in the turbulent wake of this event. My spirituality, my faith in humanity, and in spirit pulls me through even my darkest days, but I do not mean to suggest that it makes it easy. How confusing is it that life can seemingly be so cruel and so beautiful at the same time? Sometimes the gifts and lessons of this time are my central focus. And sometimes I have to throw those to the wayside and it, cry and accept the cold brutality without looking for the deeper meaning or the lessons. The vulnerability to what the moment offers which changes moment by moment, is my spirituality. Renee Brown has some thoughts on being vulnerable that I would like to share. We associate vulnerability with emotions we want to avoid, such as fear, shame, and uncertainty. Yet, we too often lose sight of the fact that vulnerability is also the birthplace of joy, belonging, creativity, authenticity, and love. That is what I seek in the midst of this trauma and invite others into this space as well. To the members of the media who have covered this over the last year, I thank you for the space and consideration you've given me and my family, the personal expressions of support many of you have offered, and the balanced and fair coverage you've provided, your credit to your profession, and I wish you all the best. As for the future, my goals have not changed. I still wish to support a community with a center that serves people's healing, for growing organic food, and for supporting art, and personally, my pottery. But how can you pour from an empty cup? I will continue to focus on my own healing and allow that to blossom in its own time to some, into something that will nourish everyone. Thank you.